Thorin's contribution to the Codebreakers was quite simply vital to the war effort. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 people who actually saved the world slash saved millions of lives. It's said he saved as many as 1 billion people from starvation. For this list, we'll be looking at the heroes of humanity throughout history who, through their stellar actions and ingenuity, saved a boatload of people. Which animals saved the most lives? Let us know below. Number 10. Alexander Fleming Having already discovered the enzyme lysozyme in 1922, by 1928 Scottish doctor Alexander Fleming went on vacation. When he returned to his laboratory, he examined the collection of petri dishes he had left out containing the bacteria Staphylococcus. Fleming published what he had done, calling his substance penicillin. Attempts to purify it and to extract its essence failed. However, one of the dishes had been contaminated with a fungus. Fleming noticed that it had stopped the bacteria from growing and was destroying it. He had stumbled into discovering the antibacterial penicillin. What Fleming stumbled upon was a microbial defense system. The penicillium mold constantly produces penicillin in order to defend itself from threats, such as nearby bacterial colonies that might consume its resources. After years of research and refining production, by 1943, penicillin was mass-produced in the U.S. to help their and their allies' forces during World War II. Later, it was created for public use. Some estimates claim as many as 200 million lives have been saved thanks to this accidental discovery. The most minor injuries could be deadly. And then a discovery was made that changed the world. Number 9. Maurice Hilleman Maurice Hilleman isn't a name that many would know. But if it wasn't for him, many of us might not be around today. It's hard to imagine, isn't it? This man who grew up in Custer County, Montana in the early 1900s, becoming, if not the most, certainly one of the most prolific scientists of our time, certainly the scientists who saved more lives than any other. Known as one of the most vital vaccinologists in history, Hilleman is responsible for around 40 vaccines, such as meningitis, various flu variants, measles, and more. It's believed Hilleman's work saves 8 million lives each year. Another big name in the vaccine world is Edward Jenner. In 1796, he realized that those infected with cowpox were immune from smallpox, a disease slaying many people at the time. Jenner really was the first one to be able to protect people against the terrible ravages of smallpox by injecting them with fluid extracted from cowpox. We can't talk about vaccines without pumping up Jonas Salk. In 1955, after years of research and tests, his polio vaccine was deemed safe for public use, saving millions of lives. He brought new ideas and new thinking, and maybe the last scientific person in the last hundred years that single-handedly took on a disease and basically cured it. Number eight, James Harrison. Sometimes it's not doctors that save lives in the medical field. Sometimes it takes an ordinary person born with a unique gift. Nicknamed the man with the golden arm, Australia's Harrison has a rare antibody within his blood plasma. James's golden arm, his right arm to be exact, from which he's donated blood nearly every week for the past 60 years. Thanks to this, his transfusions led to an injection called anti-D that's helped babies with rhesus disease. In the worst case, it can result in brain damage. After being inspired after his own life was saved by transfusions when he was a teenager, Harrison went on a donating spree since he turned 18. By the time he was forced to retire after reaching Australia's maximum donation age of 81, he had weekly contributions, resulting in 1,173 donations. It's believed Harrison is responsible for saving 2.5 million Australian babies. In terms of a contribution of time to the community, it's, uh, we can't measure it. Number seven, Joseph Lister. Before England's Joseph Lister changed the world, surgery was a rough choice for people. Surgeons rarely washed their clothes or instruments between patients. As such, many people perished from the infections or lost limbs. After hearing French scientist Louis Pasteur's germ theory of disease, Lister decided to use chemicals to destroy germs known as antiseptic. He thought that sterilization, which means getting rid of germs, could save lives. Using carbolic acid, he first covered bandages with the chemical, but many surgeons didn't buy his theory to begin with. Once people were saved from infection, Lister began using the chemical on clothes, hands, and instruments. Before his new methodology, Lister had a fatality rate of 46% from his surgeries. From his discovery in 1867, it was 15% and fell to 5% by 1877. Number 6. Alan Turing In 1939, the Allied forces were struggling with World War II. To help, they turned their attention to cracking the Enigma machine, a device used by Germany to send cryptic information. Enigma 
used a combination of rotors, plugs, and wiring to put German messages into secret code. There were one in 159 million, million, million possible combinations. So the British turned to Alan Turing, a rising star in math and science. Building on the success of Poland scientists, Turing's team developed the Bombay, a large device that mimicked the Enigma machine and allowed the Allies to intercept Germany's messages, causing their eventual fall. Combined with extraordinary mathematical insight, the codes were eroded and eventually cracked. It's estimated that without Turing's work, the war could have lasted a lot longer, resulting in the end for millions. But instead of being celebrated, Turing was convicted of being gay and forced to take chemicals. He took his own life in 1954 at the age of 41. In 2013, the Queen officially granted Alan Turing a royal pardon. No one knows what the recipient would have thought of this very late rehabilitation. Number five, Vasily Arkhipov. In 1962, the world was gripped by the Cuban Missile Crisis. American plans were to have an airstrike followed by an invasion. The United States thought that the Soviets had between 12,000 and 15,000 troops. In fact, the Soviets had between 40 and 50,000 troops. That October, the American Navy realized a Soviet Union B-59 submarine was in the water. By using non-lethal depth charges, they were hoping to spur the sub to the surface. Instead, panic set in as the Soviet crew believed the war had started, as they hadn't heard from their superiors in a while. And to make it worse, they were armed with a nuclear torpedo and considered using it. The nuclear torpedo can only be launched if both the sub's captain and its political officer are in agreement. Needing the authority of three senior officers, the captain and the political officer agreed. However, flotilla commander Valentin Savitsky didn't. He then talked down the captain, stopping a likely escalation into nuclear war and saving untold lives. Number four, Henrietta Lacks. In 1951, Henrietta Lacks felt unwell after giving birth to her fifth child. Doctors discovered she had cervical cancer. Unfortunately, her cancer spread quickly and she lost her life. As part of the care she received at Johns Hopkins, the cells from her cervix were brought into a laboratory and cultured and have become the first human living cell line. Unknown to her, since consent for this wasn't required at the time, one doctor harvested cells from Lacks' tumor. The cells from Henrietta Lacks' tumor didn't die. In fact, they thrived doubling in size every 24 hours. They discovered that unlike normal cells, laxes could divide indefinitely under the right conditions. Nicknamed HeLa, the immortalized cells have been vital to medical research, saving many, many lives. Soon the world's first cell production facility was churning out six trillion HeLa cells a week. And scientists put them to work. Various vaccines such as COVID-19 and polio, as well as cancer treatments and the understanding of HIV and AIDS and other diseases have all benefited from Lax's astonishing cells. Henrietta died never knowing how important her cells would be. Even her family didn't learn of the true extent of her legacy. Number three, Alexei Onenko, Valery Bespolov, and Boris Baranov. After an accident caused an explosion at Reactor 4 at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in April 1986, there was a chance of untold destruction. During the initial disaster, firefighters put water below the reactor to cool it. Firefighters, nuclear scientists, and the military were drafted in to try and contain the spread. However, in May, there was the possibility of the molten nuclear material melting through the floor, hitting the water, causing a massive steam explosion and costing millions of lives. To prevent this, engineers Alexei Anenko, Valery Bespolov, and Boris Baranov volunteered for what looked like a one-way mission. Wearing wetsuits, they successfully went to the basement flooded with radioactive water to turn the values to drain the tank. While there were reports they didn't survive the trip, each hero did. Number two, Norman Borlaug. Dubbed the father of the Green Revolution and the man who saved a billion lives, the name Norman Borlaug holds a lot of weight in agriculture and in many countries. The American agriculturalist who grew up on a farm was responsible for developing high-yield disease-resistant crops like wheat. Borlaug discovered that new disease-resistant varieties of wheat could be developed which would double or triple the grain produced by each plant. The result? Dramatic increases in the income and livelihood of millions of Mexican farmers. By the mid-1960s, Borlaug's success allowed nations like Mexico, Pakistan, and India to avoid the expected famines that were set to ravage the countries. Mexico and India even became self-sufficient when it came to cereal grains from Borlaug's work. 
The former had their wheat output increase six times the amount yielded in the 1940s. Breeders replicated that success with rice, and the Green Revolution was born, averting famines that were predicted in Asia in the 1960s and 70s. This led to Borla getting a Nobel Peace Prize in 1970 for his incredible contributions. Dr. Norman Borlaug, an Iowa-born crop expert, was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize yesterday for his work toward easing the world's hunger problem. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Stanislav Petrov in September 1983, Lieutenant Colonel Stanislav Petrov was the duty officer working at the Serpikov-15 command center in the Soviet Union. Suddenly, the nuclear early warning system began blaring. It had detected five missiles had been fired at them from the U.S. Since this was in the Cold War, tensions between the nations were high. It was expected that once Petrov informed his superiors about the alarm, they would fire off a retaliation nuclear strike, plunging the world into chaos. Even if something seemed fishy there, he says, do you think I was 100% certain about what I should tell the commander? Of course not. There were doubts. Instead, thanks to his training and the lack of response from the ground-based radar installations in spotting the apparent attack, Petrov declared it was a false alarm. An investigator found the warning system had apparently thought the sun's reflections onto clouds were missiles, saving countless lives. But I, myself, was not sure until the very last moment. I knew perfectly well that nobody would be able to correct my mistake if I had made one. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.